Yes, the first year is the hardest, except for, in their own way, all the others. <laughs> That's Gabriel Burke there. I'm a sex educator, author, blogger, public speaker. You'd think that with all I know about sex and how much I value it, I would have had an easy transition back into sex myself after Robert died. Not so. Even though I wrote about sex during that time, it took me months to feel sexual stirrings and begin pleasuring myself, and years to become sexual with a partner. Yes, years. The last time Robert and I made love was three months before he died in August 2008. From the time Robert became too ill for sex through the first three months after his death, I felt no sex drive whatsoever and no sexual connection to my body. I couldn't imagine wanting to have another man touch me, nor did I even have any desire to touch myself. My collection of vibrators stayed in a drawer. My only sex fantasies were memories of Robert as a healthy, loving, and enthusiastic sex partner. These memories led to great gulping tears, not arousal. Five months after Robert's death, I had a dream, which I recorded in my journal. I was with a new man, a stranger. He was behind me, his arms around my waist, and suddenly I could feel his erection through our clothes. I felt the stirrings of a sexual tingle. Then I woke up and discovered I really was aroused. I sat up in bed calling out, I'm alive! <laughs> I marveled at the time that my dormant sexuality was suddenly waking up. Amazingly, it would take three more years before I would welcome another human being into my body, and longer than that before I could do that joyfully. Along the way, I tried to date, have sex with a buddy, date, have sex with a former lover, date some more, but it was like a, a slow train that had its own schedule. Nothing I tried to do ended some mysterious inner timetable. 